do is pound my fist on something and I'm sure many of us did a lot of things that to express our hurt and our grief, you know. But now the best thing we can do is go to work. Yes, and double the work. Yes, I thank all the believers for your attendance tonight, your attention. And I hope that some word that I said tonight, though it may be in anger or hurt, will help you to save yourself. For the brothers and sisters from South Carolina State, I would like to ask uh, the ministers here, Minister Kendall and the captain, uh, Captain Curtis, I would like to ask that we pray that Allah bless them with a safe return to uh, South Carolina. I thank you very much. Thank you, brother. And what time is it? Well, sorry to have kept you so long. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I, uh, I will, with your permission, take leave. But I'd like to make an announcement to the believers while we're all here. May I? Yes, sir. Did Minister Ishmael, did, did, did he take charity and all of that? Yes, sir. Oh, that's good. Is this my water? Yes, sir. You know, Brother Farrakhan uh, is approaching his 60th um, anniversary. Of, of life on the planet and uh, thank you let's give sister Celestina a hand as she leaves and And Brother Salim, Brother Captain Salim from San Diego. Um, just, just a few announcements. As a I approach my 60th year, which will be in, in May. I wanted uh, to find a gift for you that I wanted to share with you. And I thought that I would like to give you on that day or whenever it is celebrated, a concert, a gift of music. Thank you. Thank you. The conductor of the Chicago Symphony, the associate conductor, Maestro Michael Morgan, will be conducting the New World Orchestra on that night. It will be held at Dr. Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman's church it will be on Monday night, Allah willing, May 17th. It will be a night 
that may turn out to be very, very, very big. Because one orchestra that was to accompany me, when they took it to their executive board, they got so frightened. They backed out. So there's a young female black uh, contractor that they turned the program over to get an orchestra for me. And she, along with maestro Michael Morgan, are trying to put together some of the finest musicians in the classical idiom in the city of Chicago. It already has attracted, believe it or not, attention on a national scale. The hint that Farrakhan will play um, a major violin concerto with uh, members of uh, major symphony orchestra. You say, well, man, why are you doing that? Ask David, why did he play on his harp? And when you get the answer, you'll know why I'm doing what I'm doing. This music will lift us into circles that you would not believe. There's so much I could tell you that's happening right now that it probably would blow your mind. And we ain't got time tonight, but I'll do it at another time. But you and I, by the grace of God, he's lifting us and catapulting us into areas that we might never have been able to go in times past. This concert will be a benefit for the University of Islam. <laughs> there may be, of course, the Christ Universal Choir will sing The orchestra under the direction of Maestro Michael Morgan will play a great black female pianist whom I knew when we were just youngsters in Boston, graduate of the Juilliard School of Music in New York, played concerts throughout the world, but brought four children into the world and gave up her music to rear her children. Her children have been reared, and she's back on the concert stage again. And she will be here that night to play with the symphony. There will be, God, Allah willing, Michael Morgan has asked one of the greatest Jewish cantors in the world to sing that night. I don't know whether you know what a cantor is. How many of you have heard of, of that? A cantor in the world of Judaism is like the Mu'eddin or the Hafiz in the world of Islam. You know, the Mu'eddin makes the call to prayer, right? But the Hafiz is the reciter of the Quran. And, and when they recite the Quran, they sing it. And a cantor sings the Torah. So what you're going to have that night are Christians Jews and Muslims in a night of music. 
Can you believe that? Would you like to be there that night? Yes, sir. You would? Yes, sir. How many of you have ever seen a symphony orchestra perform? Oh, that's good. Now, I know if you like rock and jazz and rap, D.A., that's not going to be that night. But you hear the other side of the coin. Rasul Muhammad, on your father's 60th birthday, I wrote a song, and they had a banquet for him, and I came out to Chicago, and I sang for him. And the song, you will hear it on the videotape on our first Savior's Day, This Is The One. I don't know if you ever heard it. Have you, how many of you have ever heard, heard it? Man. Well, you know what? I got to let you hear it. I'm not going to be singing that night. But Rasul, I think, has or is in the process of writing something to be introduced that night. And so we should have a wonderful evening, Allah willing. The tickets will go on sale shortly, and we want to fill Christ Universal Temple. How many of you read Cup's column in the Sunday Sun Times? Did you know that Mr. Cups and that came and had dinner with me at the palace? Yes, sir. How did you know? <laughs> the word got around, huh? Yeah, he put it in the paper too. As you know, he is Jewish. And I think by the help of God, he felt a little differently after dinner. He didn't quote all my words exactly right. So I hope you don't get thrown off. But what he said in the paper was sufficient to begin the process of some of the Jews wanting to sit down and have a dialogue with Minister Farrakhan and members of the Nation of Islam. In How to Eat to Live, I think it's either book one or book two, the messenger hints that something would be worked out between us and the Jews in the United States. How many of you remember reading that? You do? Good. Well, let's see what happened. May Allah bless you and thank you so much for a wonderful evening. Minister, Mr. Ishmael, would you close us out in prayer? Are there no more announcements? Okay. No questions. Everybody everybody's understands. Yes, ma'am. Wa alaikum salam. Yes. Well, you can start by referring them either to Sister Ava Muhammad or Brother Ishmael Muhammad or Brother Abdullah Muhammad or myself. When you have problems, seek 
counsel. There will be help for you if you seek it. Okay? And sometimes when you hear the problem, if you know it's a little above your ability to handle, take that person to somebody immediately. Don't even try to handle it. Say, well, I better get this to somebody else. Okay? Thank you. Okay, no more questions? Yes, ma'am? Wa alaikum salam. Sister, I would probably um, disagree a little, not with the Quran, but you know, the messenger said there's no set time for the black man to die. Did you hear him say that? We make our time by the way we live. I think that some of the brothers and sisters should say, if I had, maybe it would have been different, but Allah is the best knower. So that a brother will never, or a sister will never not do the right thing tomorrow by saying, well, anyway, it was decreed. You follow me, sister? There is no mystery, God. So each of us has a responsibility to our brother and sister. So maybe if they had done something, we might have been able to. We weren't. Allah is the best knower. Yes, if someone had called his father, called his mother, call me. Yes, Since I was his sponsor in college, then perhaps I might have been able to speak a word to him. But it didn't happen. Allah is the best knower. But each one of us have a duty by the next brother and you do your duty and whatever Allah wills it will be but you do your duty by your brother and I'm going to close with this scripture I think it's in Ezekiel 2 second chapter ninth verse I believe and it's mentioned in your lessons what is the duty of the civilized man? And if the civilized man or woman fails to perform his or her duty, what must be done? And then it refers you to the Bible wherein it reads that when you see a person in their sin and you warn them not, they will surely die and their blood will be required at your hand. On the other hand, 
if you see them in their sin and you warn them and they persist in sin, they will surely die, but you shall be spared because you warned them. So each one of you has a duty by your sister and your brother. When you see them going wrong, don't see them and keep your mouth shut. Warn them, and if they persist in evil, then Allah is the best knower. You did what you were supposed to do. Thank you for your statement, your questions. I greet you in peace. Uh, Brother Minister Ishmael will have prayer as I will uh, take leave of you with your permission. Yes, Assalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. God is the greatest. Allahu Akbar. All together now. Allahu Akbar. All praises due to Allah for the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. Praise be to Allah, brothers and sisters.